We are on to our final award, the Visionary Award, recognizing individuals who've had an extraordinary impact on agriculture in our region. Please help me welcome Scott Williams as he inducts Jim Holmes and John Williams into the Ag Hall of Fame with the 2022 Visionary Award. Hello, everybody. I, I, you all made the wrong choice for who should go last. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, it's an honor to introduce Jim and, and my dad. Um, I think the award would probably be better deserved if it was called a Perseverance Award as opposed to a Visionary Award. Um, when they started way back when in 1973 with a patch of desert and what's now known as Red Mountain, I don't think they had a vision. I, I think they had a dream that they could do something unique and create a product that people would be excited about and maybe get rich and quit their day jobs. Um, that never happened. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I have lots of memories of, of what happened out there um, and the family that it took and Jim and Dad's friendship. It's pretty incredible. They, they had a partnership for a little over 20 years on a handshake and separated friends and they had a, a passion and a drive that was infectious. Um, people say now that on Red Mountain we planted wine grapes and there's all this activity and worldwide recognition and boy, we were so smart and boy, you gotta be rich. And I know all kinds of people that planted Golden Delicious at the same time and retired after 10 years and had a yacht. And, all that good stuff, and we're still out grubbing in the dirt. Um, you know, perseverance. Um, we started making wine in Jim Holmes's garage in West Richland in 1980. That was supposed to be a temporary job or a temporary facility, and it was there till 1994, only 16 years. My, my parents built a house out on the vineyard and the house is a loose term because when we planted the vineyard, there wasn't really anybody that, one, knew how to do it, and two, would lend us any money. So it was all done sort of on a shoestring. And uh, we, we actually got some grapes planted and, and sold them to the few wineries that were um, in existence at that time and decided that we wanted to build a winery as well. And so... They go to the bank and um, ask for some money to build a winery. And they said, well, you guys don't know how to make wine, and you're just engineers. Why should we lend you any money? But we, you can build as big a house as you want. So mom and dad built a house, and it had 10-foot basement walls and a door big enough to drive a forklift through. And um, we proceeded to put the tasting room in the basement of that house um, temporarily, and it was there for only 20 years. But the idea that anybody would come to Benton City and on vacation and taste wine was pretty ludicrous. So anyhow, um, the tasting room in the basement of the house worked pretty well. Mom had to get up in the morning and vacuum fruit flies out of the bathroom and uh, put up with bottling, which was in the basement, and. We'd drive the big truck, and the wine would go through the basement in a hose like so, and there'd be people clinging around it down there, bottling wine and making noise, and anyhow, it was all great fun. 1988, 1988 Progress Edition. This Jim and Dad on the front, um, big glasses, big hair, mustache. It's all back in style now. But uh, 
in this article in 1988, it, it talks about how the number of wineries had grown from just a few to 87, and we were harvesting 5,000 tons of grapes, and we were worried about oversupply and saturation, and now there are over 1,000 wineries and 200,000 tons of grapes, and the industry has become very, very important. And this little area, Red Mountain, that Dad and Jim Holmes pioneered and persevered and sacrificed greatly to develop is now known as one of the best places in the world to grow grapes. So anyhow, um, I'd like to um, thank my wife and my mother and my siblings who all helped and Jim Holmes' family and my dad and a couple, couple words of wisdom. Um, it's amazing what you can learn growing up with a guy that says, here, hold this. <laughs> and I also learned that um, when he told me, if you want to, you can, if, insert whatever, that that wasn't a choice. When we started, there were only about three, probably four wineries in the state. My former partner, Jim Holmes, was from California. We were working in research at Hanford, and uh, this was uh, something else to do. This was a long time ago, 1970 or so, and the world has changed immensely for Washington, wine drinkers. 1973 was when I got this land from my father-in-law. I was an engineer and I knew how to do things because I worked in the scientific area for quite a few years. From that we went on and planted some more grapes. We originally planted just uh, about nine acres down on the west end. Technology um, in those early days was very minimal. Nobody really knew much about anything except how it had been done before. And so when we planted wine grapes, we had no guidance. There was a big juice grape industry here in those days. So we said, we'll do it like that. Like this Red Mountain spot uh, that's known by the world. You say grapes are from Red Mountain, Washington. The wine world knows what you're talking about. If you're in engineering, you're a problem solver. That's, I think, the thing that got us the ability to learn and progress over a period of time. I enjoy just being here. I enjoy being outside. I enjoy growing grapes. I enjoy seeing how the, what we do changes the way the, the wine comes out. It's every year is an adventure. It's just been a great life. It's been a wonderful place to be, a wonderful time to be here. Yeah, I need it back. <laughs> well, I guess I'm up now. I. Uh, I was very surprised when I was chosen to come and be a presenter here. My uh, son uh, that introduced, introduced me here, and uh, he's been a big part of our winery and our wine business and over all of the years. So my, my uh, feeling about the whole area here and all the great things that have been gone on since I first came here. It uh, was a, a time when there was, lived in Richland. There was, if you didn't live in, 
If you didn't work at Hanford, you couldn't live there. And I was thinking about when we were driving out here today, how much area, some cities, new housing, and the whole place has just exploded. And from my standpoint anyway, and uh, I remember we used to come over here all the time and have uh, wine, uh, wine functions here with uh, all the wineries in Washington that were here at that time. And then when I started, there weren't very many wineries here. And everybody, well, I worked at Hanford there, and people say, are you so much crazy? Because it was one of those things that it was just not a recognized venture out here. So anyway, I started, uh, we started a grape vineyard and a wine grape vineyard. And at that time, the only thing that was grown around here were uh, grape, grape wines, uh, our grape juice grapes. And uh, so it was quite a difference in when we started, people thought, oh my God, you guys don't know what the heck you're doing. And the fact is, we didn't know a hell of a lot of what we were doing. So, so it was a matter of learning and experimenting and, uh, and just overall having the, uh, the go ahead to invest everything that we had. And at that time, when we were wanting to grow grapes or starting wine, nobody would lend us any money. They, uh, they said, wine grapes? That, that was not, there weren't very many in the state of Washington at that time. I think probably when we started, there were some less than six, seven wineries, something like that. And uh, uh, eventually there were more and more and more. Now there's, I think, over a thousand wineries in, in the Washington state. So it was, it was quite, a, quite a change. It was a period of time when, when things were experimenting. We didn't have much other input that we, we were able to use to, uh, vin to venture into this business. And so pretty much everything we did was right just by pull, pulling up our boots and heading out there. I know you guys have a lot of cowboy hats out here. I didn't wear my cowboy hat. <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, I think that the thing of it is is that it was, it was, a, it was a real adventure for us. And when I started, we both my part, former partner, Jim Holmes, and I, we were both, uh, I met him on the first day I went to work at Hanford, and he was from California, and so I helped him drink his collection of wines. And we thought, oh my God, that's pretty good stuff, because I was just a beer drinking kid before that. And uh, so anyway, uh, from that point on, we were able to uh, expand our, our grape vineyard a little bit at a time, and you, my son there, uh, he went to, he went to WSU in agricultural engineering, and then worked for us and worked for himself, and pretty soon we had pretty much filled up a good, pretty good spot on Red Mountain. And before Red Mountain, when we went out there, people says. What are you doing out there? So anyway, we figured that uh, after drinking a few glasses of wine, we said, oh, God, we can probably do this. <laughs> so anyway, uh, as that went on, and we were able to produce more, and my son, Scott, that uh, was here, he planted some more vineyards, him, him and Vicky. And uh, now we have uh, grandkids working working and running the winery, which is really quite, a, quite an experience. And uh, so anyway, I just, I just, uh, I don't know what else to say, except it's been a wonderful life. And uh, see all the great people out here in the farming community. And, you know, when we started in Richland, 
It was the only be if you if you weren't didn't work for Hanford, you couldn't live there. So it's really changed now. I noticed that when we're coming over here. There's houses every place. Uh, just and it's just it's such a remarkable growth that I just can't hardly imagine that it's happened, but it did. And look at all the people we have here tonight. Thank you. So we are going to give you your award, and to present that award is Jared Bailey with RDO Equipment. On behalf of RDO Equipment, uh, we're proud to present the 2022 Visionary Award. Thank you. We've done a lot of business with RDO. <laughs> You guys would like this. Our first production tractor was a 40-year-old John Deere M. <laughs> and it's still there. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Thank you.